We got a sick sickle bar mower. <laughs> hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Today we're working on the Massey Ferguson 240 tractor. Now if you tuned in last week, we put a secondary hydraulic lever right there and we installed a secondary hydraulic. That secondary hydraulic was totally for controlling this Moschio sickle bar mower. I'll post a link, that thing is a beast of a sickle bar mower, but I broke it. And the reason I broke it is because there's so many rocks here on the Stony Ridge farm. While that mower was cutting, you know, you'll see totally how it works today, because we're gonna take it apart and put it all back together. The way it works is the, the cutter blades and the guards both slide back and forth and I caught just the right rock in just the right spot and I snapped the cutter bar blade down here. So we're gonna take it apart, put it back together and fix this sickle bar mower today. Let's have some fun. Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this If you mess with my freedom I'll tell you just what you can kiss That's right first things first this is held up by the three point on the tractor I want to be safe so I have a jack stand here we're gonna go ahead and raise this jack stand up there we go just to that position right there that way in case this thing starts to settle a little bit from the three point it will settle down onto the jack stand okay now we're going to go down here on this side and I do believe we're going to have to tilt this thing back just a little bit ever so slightly and I'm going to wear rubber gloves on this because I've coated this entire sickle bar mower with automatic transmission fluid to help preserve it and that keeps it from rusting. So let's define our problem with the sickle bar mower. Typically a sickle bar mower, just the cutter blade portion, which means this, just this portion moves. With this sickle bar mower, both the guard and the cutter blade move, okay? This should not be moving freely like that. We've got a break right down here at the bottom. We'll get you a little close up on that. So on the bottom right here, see how it's separated from that one? That means this whole entire strap that you see moving up and down, it has these bolts in it, needs to be replaced. And we have a new strap. So this is our new strap. You see all the bolt holes right there? And here's the bearing in the end of it. That's it. It's all packed with grease ready to rock and roll. So <laughs> all this is is really just removing all the teeth reinstalling a new strap and then putting all the teeth back, but it's gonna present challenges, I'm certain. Lovely DeWalt socket set. I'll post a link down in the video description. Awesome. So we gotta figure out what size nut this is. My guess is it's, yep, it's a 13 millimeter. I think the whole thing is all 13 millimeters. So I'm gonna set this guy back over to the side. Again, I'm wearing gloves just for the simple fact is I just don't want my hands to be totally greasy from this job. And they will be greased up because I keep this nice and wet. Oh, nice, daddy like. <laughs> That's very cool, very, very cool. And it came out, first one came out super easy. Oh, nice. Okay, this is gonna be easier than I thought, check it out. This bolt is loosened and that bolt is loosened and guard number one slips right out. Pretty cool, pretty simple. We'll sit this on the table behind us in the right order. Nice, very simple. Take this one off. Look at that. Come on, very easy. Well, here's the new bar that we have in place. And in order to keep everything organized in my head, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and lay everything in place the way it came off, okay? So I know that this bar goes here, the next bar, and so on. So that'll be it. We'll just slip off the next one. There we go. Take our rag, wipe it nice and clean, and put it right here. Match it up with its perspective bolts. Wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. We're gonna bring the guard down now with the hydraulic lever here on the tractor. Doesn't have to be running to bring this down. Gonna 
Bring it down just about. Now we're gonna try and slip out the bar that is the problem. Out with the old. That's awesome, dude. Awesome. Uh, man, I'm gonna have to remove the lower guards, which dictates the upper guards have to be pulled off too. So I've gotta disassemble this whole thing, man. Check it out though. Out comes the old. And this is where it broke. I'd imagine this is designed to give way right here. And all I could tell, it was still cutting, but it was cutting really poorly. And it started going chat, 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 chat. It was just chattering a little bit. So that's the broken piece. And the new piece is laid out here. I'm just gonna lay it. Everything needs to just be laid out perspectively. The old right beside the new, that way I get it all back together just right. So let's go remove every one of these guards. These guards are these critters right here. Every one of those little critters is gonna have to be pulled off. <laughs> here we go. Oh yeah. Okay, that's one of the guards. Now, you know why I didn't do this job? <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, this, is, this is a chore, this is a bit of a chore. However, we'll have an awesome cutting mower when we're done. That's it, we've got everything free except for down below here where we've gotta get the old bearing assembly and cutter bar out and then we should be able to put it back in. The guard bar, not cutter bar. Kinda neat to see how this thing works. So the next thing I have to do is pull this guard off right here. We'll go ahead and lubricate everything real good before we reassemble. This is a, a guard to keep debris and your hands out from in where all the moving parts are. The biggest challenge of this, besides the tedious nature of the job, is going to be getting this cutter bar off. Uh, come on, baby. There it goes, hot dog, don't have to take it all the way out. So that's our cover, <laughs> thank you. So here's our cutter bar right here. The bar that rode right along in here is this one. That's the one that we have to get out. So we have to loosen this bolt way down in here and slide that out and remove this bar. This is the challenge of the day. Guys, this is why you see sickle bar mowers laying around everywhere on people's farms. They get a little something wrong with them and it takes a couple of hours to fix it. Uh, it's not like a, a rotary cutter uh, type mower uh, where you can just roll it over and sharpen the blades or replace the blades. It's a little bit more involved with the maintenance, but man, the cut is super duper nice. But that's why you drive by old farms and I'll bet you guys post some comments. I bet you guys have seen them and or have one yourself <laughs> that is uh, broken down and you just need to fix it. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort to get in here and do this kind of stuff. I think it's fun. So we've got one more bolt to remove before we can slide this cutter bar off or this guard bar off. But in order to get to that bolt, I've got to rotate the uh, PTO shaft. I don't want to rotate it with it like this. In other words, it, things might go scattering. So what we're gonna do is remove this cover right here and spin the gear mechanism in here so that we can slide the uh, PTO shaft just so that thing is not in a bind. All I've got to do is rotate this wheel ever so slightly to get everything in the right position. So to rotate this wheel over here in order to bring this up just high enough so I could get into this workspace. And then again, we'll take our 13 millimeter and remove the last guard. Rotate my wheel a little more. Sickle bar down out of the way. Fingers crossed I don't have to pull the sickle bar off too. So the sickle bar is held in with the bolt in place and a spring pin. So there's the bolt 
and here's the spring pin and that's what we have to drive out is the spring pin and I'm going to be using hopefully this extension to knock that spring pin out and slide the new one in and it's raining okay so there's a spring pin right down in here almost there come on come on just another little bitty bit that's what we want to get out right there so this is the culprit this was <laughs> the troublesome piece okay that's the piece that broke out. There's a little bearing in there and we're going to replace it with this new piece, which <laughs> now you can see totally where it broke. Pretty cool. Pretty nifty. Okay. Bad. Bye bye. Thought we we're going to get rained out there for a minute. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to flex this just ever so slightly. Slide this guy into place and back down in the appropriate spot. Slide our spring ring back into place, just like so. This is our nut and bolt combination that has to go in there. What was really cool is that I could go right online and order all these parts that I needed. We'll slide our bolt through, just like so, <laughs> covered in grease, and probably reach down from below. Don't need that rag anymore. And we'll get that bolt started. Okay, nice. Now, we gotta put it back together. <laughs> that is a disaster. We're gonna assemble this thing and we're gonna put it on time lapse. <laughs> um, I do have a sanding sponge and I'm gonna take off some of this surface rust right here before I reinstall stuff so everything is nice and snug. And I also have a little bit of thread locker, blue thread locker so that we don't have to worry about these things coming loose. I don't really think it's necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So let me tell you what I'm learning. So at first I started putting all of these guards on tightly at the bottom. That was a mistake. Put them on loose, finger tight, and then go back through and snug them all down. Uh, when I first tightened the very bottom one, it was off just a fraction of a millimeter and that caused me to be off all the way up through here. So I had to loosen them back up. So put them on finger tight and then go back through and snug everything up. Uh, we've just about got all the guards on and then we'll slip the big plates back on the back side. It's going pretty fast. I'm going to say 20 minutes to do that and probably 20 minutes to do that and we'll be ready. We'll fire the sickle bar up and see if we get the chatter. I don't think we're going to get very much chatter. Things will be awesome. I'll throw the uh, GoPro on and we'll go clip a little bit of broom straw. We've got a lot of broom grass growing, broom straw growing on the other side of the farm. So I'm finding the biggest challenge is reinstalling these guards that go on the top. And I've got them all stuck on here kind of loosely right now because what happens is when we put the uh, stub guards on uh, that make that scissor action, what happens is this thing gets heavy and it starts to sag in the middle. So I had to go to the middle and strap it up. And now I'm going to start working my way down this direction, getting these shims all lined up absolutely perfect is a challenge. Now, while you have the shims, uh, the reason you have the shims in place right here is so that things don't rub. In other words, so you don't rub anything uh, completely uh, out of whack. So that's why 
Uh, the shims are in place. We don't have shims on this one. I just stuck it on here so I could get this blade up because it was sagging down like that. And now we've got it all lined up and we're gonna start tightening these guys. What I'm doing, each one of these, the threads are so dirty where it's just been in the grass. I'm just running the bolts in and out just to clean the threads up so that I can get them started a little bit easier. That seems to be helping. Uh, kind of a pain in the butt. I don't think there's any way to make all this stuff perfectly clean. Uh, I think what I'm doing is just taking a bolt uh, that looks well, let's see if we can get, get one out for you. Taking a bolt that looks like that and turning it into a bolt that's all clean and nice on the end instead of all grimy and nasty. So that's what they look like. Last two, good gracious, what a job. Guys, if you've ever taken apart a sickle bar mower, let me know, post a comment down there. Tell me if, uh, <laughs> tell me if it's been this much trouble for you. The only reason I'm doing this is because I love this mower. This thing is awesome and I can't wait to get out on that 30 something year old tractor and, and get it done. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm getting rained on. <laughs> the rainstorms have moved in. I am gonna engage the PTO to make sure it's gonna work real quick for you. And we'll take it over there and we'll do, do a little grass clipping. So thanks a lot for joining me today. Now you know how a sickle bar mower comes apart and goes back together. And some of the maintenance items that you might have to incur if you have a sickle bar mower. I'm getting wet. <laughs> I gotta get busy. Here we go. Yeah, baby. Ooh She's working good, man. That's awesome. Super happy, guys. We're gonna put her to work for the end credits for you guys, but it's raining right now, so it'll be tomorrow afternoon before we get out here. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. Woo!